Hello. Coach Bill. It is. Hey, it's Monk down in Tuscaloosa. Monk, what is up? Not a whole lot. Just finished up a meeting and run upstairs real quick. I was like, I got to get this phone call. I got to make this phone call. So, <laughs> <laughs> How are you, my friend? I am uh, I'm doing great. I'm running crazy, but I'm doing great. I mean, you know, looking at, at all you've done here, let me, let me go ahead and set this up first. You, you're born and raised in Memphis. You own Classic American Hardwoods. Uh, the subject of the documentary, Undefeated, which won an Academy Award for Best Documentary Film in 2011, public speaker slash motivator, uh, and the author of a new book now, Against the Grain, A Coach's Wisdom on Character, Faith, Family, and Love. I mean, when do you find time to sit? I'm sitting right now. I'm talking to you. Buddy. <laughs> when you're doing interviews, I guess. Yeah, we, we can sit out and relax right now. Right on. <laughs> so how's the family? How are you doing? Doing great. Wife is beautiful and sassy, which is just right. <laughs> kids are kids are 18, 17, 16, and 15, and driving Whew. me nuts, but doing great. And, you know, life's good, man. Just working. Well, good. How's the book being received? Unbelievably well. Uh, it, uh, let's see. Uh, last week it was Fox and Friends, and I did a live web thing with Coach Carroll uh, from the Seahawks facility in Seattle. That's awesome. This this week back, kind of doing doing normal life and a bunch of radio, and then I'm back out doing Glenn Beck and a bunch of other national shows, and it, it's going great. It's going amazing, really. And you're going to be with us in Birmingham Saturday at two o'clock at the Books a Million at seven five seven Brookwood Village. Um, you're going to be speaking and signing as well? I'll do a quick five, ten minute kind of explanation of the book and talk about some of the tenants in it and then uh, sit down and sign whoever whoever shows up by his book. I'll sit down and sign it and take a picture if they want it and then move on. Books of Million was, was very gracious and asked me down and got in touch with uh, the publicist and all that on the book. And so I, I thought, you know, I like Birmingham. I'll ride <laughs> down there and do it. So I'm headed down there. Well, cool. It's definitely, in, in reading the book, uh, it's one big motivational tool. Um, what would you say, to what do you owe your success? Man, I mean, you know, I don't know. Luck, uh, grace, blessings. I, you know, it, it, it really the tenets that are in the book. I, I mean, he, look, the 30,000 view of Against the Grain is this. We can be an open-minded, inclusive forward-thinking society without abandoning the core principles that got us there in the first place. And I have a dad left home when I was four, and my mom was married and divorced five times. And my, my mom's fourth husband shot at me down a hallway, and I had to dive out a window to save myself. And, you yeah. know, I, I had an interesting come up. But I also had two really wonderful grandfathers and a bunch of really good coaches and mentors and, and guys that that I worked for that, that taught me stuff. And so while I'm not exactly like any of those people, a little bit of me is exactly like all of them. Yeah. And so where does my success and where does all of it come from? It, it, it comes from life experiences and, and the amazing things that, that I've been able to pick up here and there from amazing people. And, and, and I tried to kind of ball all that up in, in one piece of work and against the grain to, to kind of talk about the things that matter, I think. And I think, too, in reading the book and, and you know, following you on Twitter and hearing you speak when, when we were at uh, St. Jude in January, you probably got about as much common sense as anybody I've ever met. And it's just, you know, and, and when you when you when you look at it and you, and you hear hear you on stage speaking about about your life and, and about your 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 goals, your ideas, the way you lead your life. I mean, it's all common sense that, that all of us we have inside of us. You know, and you just kind of hope that by reading something like this, it, it stirs up something in you, you know? Well, I, I think that's a big, after winning the Academy Award, I started speaking all over the country in terms of all the requests while running my business. And, you know, it, it's that's the, the, the beauty of the whole thing is this. You do not have to be the president of the United States or an elected position, and you do not have to own a company or be the head coach of the University of Alabama or, or be the, the manager of a business you know, with 400 people in it, you don't have to be those people in order to lead. Yeah. You can get out of your comfort zone and serve and lead the spouse laying in the bed with you at night. You can get out of your comfort zone and serve and lead the kids down the hallway. You can get out of your comfort zone and serve and lead the guy in the next cubicle. 
And, and so the beauty of Against the Grain is all these tenets that are in the book and the illustrations and stories that are in it to show you how this stuff works in your life is not for all the smart, pretty people. It's just for guys like you and me and, and ladies like my wife and, and girls like my daughters to just think about employing their everyday lives. I mean, I'm, I'm, I coach football and own a lumber company. I'm not, you know, I'm not anything different. The only difference for me and thousands of other people in this country is my story got told. Yeah. But that gave me a platform to talk about this stuff and say, hey, we don't have to be dominated by all the smart people. We can do this stuff in our own lives. That's awesome. I tell you, there, there's only been a few people, a handful of people in my life that made me stop and pull out a pen and piece of paper and start writing. That'd be my mom, my dad, Joe Theismann, when he came and spoke to us at St. Jude, and then you up on that stage. I still, I wrote down, get out of your comfort zone, serve, and think about your legacy uh, are the yeah. things that I remember. And I shared that with you on, on Twitter. Um, looking back at your book, there's a, a quote in there that, and I've probably highlighted um, words on these pages more than any book I've ever uh, read, but it's you say lack of character is a cancer that eats away at the person from the inside. Now, also in the film, one of the main focuses of your your teachings is character. How important is character? It's everything. Um, nothing else matters if you don't understand character. But the problem is the vast majority of society don't understand character, and I don't mean they. They don't get it. I think they're. I think they're misinformed. A lot of people think character is. You know, you see this guy walking around with a smile on his face that maybe volunteers in the community and has a good job and his family looks right and, and everybody says, well, that's a high character individual. Yeah. And I, I just, I'm not sure. I'm not saying he's not, but I'm not saying he is either. But the threshold of character is not how you handle your success, but how you handle your failures. Yeah. And. And when everything's going, it's easy to be a champ when your business is doing well. It's easy to be a champ when your kids' grades are right and they're acting good in school when your marriage is good. It's easy to be a champ when your team you're coaching is 4-0 and, you, and you're looking at going 5-0. and It's easy to be a champ when everything's right in the world. It's when life hits you in the mouth and how you respond to that that yeah. truly demonstrates character. And and so I don't, I don't necessarily look at, people and say, well, they're a high-character individual just because things are going well in their life. I look at people and say, they got hit in the mouth, and they responded in the right way with integrity and perseverance and grit and understand the dignity of hard work and, and civility. Yeah. And those are the people that I think have high character. And so when you say how important is character, I think I think character is everything because how you respond to difficult situations really illuminates what kind of human being you are. And that is is pretty much the overall message in the movie as well. If nobody's seen that movie, you definitely got to check it out. Now, this here, too. Now, let me explain, because, yes, you're a coach, but this is not a football book. It's no. But I think that, that your coaching experiences kind of provide the basis for the message. If, if there was one thing you'd want people to take away from reading the book, what would it be? That we can be open and inclusive without abandoning what got us here in the first place. You know... Sixty years ago, if Molly Cyrus had swung around on a wrecking ball butt naked, it would have been pornography. Yeah. All right. Today, today it's mainstream entertainment. Yeah. And and the reason I say that is just imagine what society is going to be acceptive of and and will be mainstream sixty more years from today. Well, just imagine if we go those sixty years and forget the importance of character and perseverance and the dignity of hard work and grace and forgiveness and the importance of our legacy. And what I'm saying is you can't fight progress because society's progress. It's going to happen. Yeah. Elvis Presley was almost lewd when he came out. Parents wouldn't watch their kids watch him gyrate. Today, he would be old school. Yeah. Things are going to change. You've got to get it right in your mind. It's going to change. But what I want to make sure we do is as we change and as we progress, as we become more inclusive and as society evolves, we make sure we bring these core fundamental tenets with us as we go so that we can improve and progress, but make sure we don't give up the core of who we are as a society. Mm. Well said. Um, can we talk football for a second? Yeah, talk football. Are you still coaching? Yeah, I'm coaching. So you went you went from you had what a 6 year run at Manassas yep. and then you started coaching your son's football team. Right. And I guess I want to look back kind of at Manassas who what player most surprised you? Chavis. Chavis? No doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, 
here's a kid who as a freshman was a phenom, an absolute freak, and after game five, he disappears, and he shows back up before his junior season, having spent 15 months in the penitentiary. Yeah. And now was the six two and a half, two hundred twenty five pound guy who at sixteen years old ran electronically time four five five forty mm. to play linebacker at the SEC as a junior in high school and had been to jail and learned how to be hateful, angry, mad, depressed, and um, and was rolling up coaches and fighting with players and being nothing but a distraction. And by his senior year, he was a leader on the team, understood these fundamentals and principles, employed them in his life, and now he's a father, and he'll be graduating college um, next semester, and he's going to be teaching and coaching football. If you don't think that tennis and against the grain can matter and change a person's life, all you got to do is look at Chavis. Do you still keep in touch with, with most of the players? All of them. Yeah, I saw Chavis. Uh, I think I saw Chavis Saturday doing great well cool has coaching taught you anything that life may not have taught you um yeah i you know i i think life and sports and business really kind of emulate one another i mean one of the one of the things we've repeated from coaches have been saying for the beginning of time is that football doesn't build character football reveals character Mm -hmm. and and i agree with that but i will tell you something else a troubling situation in your business doesn't build character. It reveals it. When when you and your spouse are having a little difficulty in your marriage, that doesn't build character. That reveals it. When when your when your seventeen year old son gets caught drinking beer behind the Costco, mm-hmm. and you have to deal with that as a father, that doesn't build character. That reveals it. What builds character is your understanding of commitment, perseverance, and dignity, their hard work, and all these tenets, and you build that of yourself. And then when the when when things happen, that reveals what you've built, or unfortunately, will also reveal what you haven't built. And so, I think sports, business, and 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 all of these things we go through are just little microcosms of the bigger picture about how our character must be about how we respond, and that the difficult times reveal our character, and 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 the way to build that character is to make sure we employ all these tenets of, of legacy and grace, all the tenets that are in against the brain, employ them in your life so that when the world does hit you in the mouth, you're prepared to handle it. Well, Coach Bill Courtney, I do appreciate it. Against the Grain is the book, A Coach's Wisdom on Character, Faith, Family, and Love. And you'll be signing copies of your book uh, 2 o'clock p.m. at the Books a Million in Brookwood Village in Birmingham this Saturday. And I'll be out there. I'll be one of them uh, standing there with my book in hand. I, I can't wait to see you again, Monk. And, if it, you know, people, shameless plug, if you want to hear more, read excerpts, whatever, you can go to CoachBillCourtney.com, national release. You can get it on Amazon or whatever. But I, I hope we see everybody at Books of Me, and I, and I look forward to seeing you. Yes, I look forward to it as well. Um, have a good day and a safe trip. Thank you, Brad. We'll Thank you. you. All right, bye-bye.